Ahoy, everyone. This is David Perry with my continuing series of interviews with people, clients, colleagues, artists, and in this case, foodies, and talking about how we get from the great pause into the great return. And it's my very great pleasure today to have with us, well, I think perhaps the greatest lover of ice cream I've ever met. Please welcome Arindam Ja. Arindam, welcome. Thank you, David. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. So before I tell people where they can find your current product, Glazier Rolls, talk to us about how you got from your native India here to San Francisco's Union Square and when did your love of ice cream begin? Well, the second question is tough. My love for ice cream began, I don't remember when, but since I was born, probably I was really excited about ice cream. So one story that comes in my mind is that when I got my first job and first time I got some money in my hand, I was, and I was working in India back in 2005. And uh, I was actually spending 10% of my salary on ice cream in a state in India, which produces highest amount of milk. So ice cream was dirt cheap there. And I was still spending 10% of my engineer's salary on ice cream, which, uh, unfortunately took me to the ER within three or four months. And uh, the doctor told me that, uh, hey, if you don't stop eating ice cream on a daily basis, and your pneumonia and your bronchitis would probably gonna be uh, from acute to chronic. Uh, so that was a <laughs> very strong words from the doctors, but I think it failed to persuade me to eat less ice cream. So in 2009, I came to US Back, going back to your question, I came to Ohio, uh, Case Western Reserve University, which is now kind of famous or infamous for the last debate uh, between uh, Trump and Biden. So I came to that college to pursue my master's and I was there for two years. And then I started working for first four years in Capital One um, in Virginia and then in some time in Dallas, Texas. And then I came to Bay Area in 2015 and I started working for PayPal. And yes, I did cut down my ice cream consumption uh, from 10% uh, of my salary <laughs> to something much more manageable. So I'm just having a pint a day nowadays. So that's, I think it's an improvement from. Yeah, but you know, I, 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 I've heard, I have heard of a pack a day smoker but I've never heard of a pint yeah. a day ice cream eater. That's, that's amazing. I actually went to a group of people who are considered kind of alcoholic anonymous kind of a group. Uh, and those people had not only alcohol abuse problem, but they also had other uh, problems. And they were talking about their loved ones or their issues with addiction. And when I said I have addiction with ice cream and they were like, <sighs> They were really angry with me <laughs> because they don't consider this is an addiction. And uh, that was kind of uh, interesting, like how people think about these things. But I don't think I'm an addict. I can live without ice cream as well. But, but you would just, um, but you would yeah, just prefer, I, you would prefer not to live without ice cream. Yes, that's why I opened in my own shop so that I always have my supply of ice cream. Uh, not one, but two. Uh, so... Yeah, even there is like closures or if there is no customers or there is social distancing going on, I can always make my own ice cream. And I've also been very thoughtful about it. So the ice cream that I make at Glacier, uh, the ice cream can be made in front of people uh, right there on the spot. So even there is no scooping involved, I can still make my ice cream from basic milk at any given point of time, which gives me a lot of flexibility to play with the flavors and we can get into that in detail later. But yeah, I, I enjoy ice cream and that's why one of the reasons I opened it. Um, I did have to learn it from somewhere. So um, I did not have background in food business before. So SBDC helped me, uh, small business organizations helped me to learn about food businesses. Uh, I'd taken a few courses. I went to Thailand from where it actually originated. Uh, to learn more about how to make rolled ice cream. Um, and that's my main product in my shop. Other than we also have coffee, tea, snacks. Uh, but I would think that they, those are complementary products. My main product is ice cream. 
Right. Well, now I have I have been by the shop. I'm looking forward to going there and having something delicious. I, I love what you describe your shop as snacks for the soul. And you are right in the middle of the heart of San Francisco, Union Square. And, you know, here we are in October of 2020. And I look back and heard about when you opened. You have had a challenging year, even more so than, than a lot of people. You opened in January and then you had to close in March. Then you reopened in June and you had to close again. And now you're open again. How do you keep that wonderfully optimistic smile and laugh on your face? I think I have gone through a lot of challenges uh, in my life. So uh, most of the time, if we can survive the challenge, we come out stronger from those challenges. Uh, so I'm pretty optimistic uh, on a longer term view. But if you think about what's going to happen tomorrow, I would be very pessimistic. But uh, I'm hopeful that things would get better eventually. And when you say heart of San Francisco, the first word that came in my mind is heartbroken. Like, yes, it is the heart of San Francisco, but uh, the situation is really sad there. Shops around the Union Square are actually closing in front of our own eyes. And that's the ecosystem issue. Like if things are not coming back quickly, which doesn't seem like gonna happen in the next couple of months, uh, with the virus and whatever happening, um, not only in the US, uh, but also all over the world. Uh, it seems like it might be difficult uh, for next two, three months for all of us. Uh, and we have to maybe cut down hours, maybe find out some other resources to survive for next two, three months before it gets better. So we have to prepare for the long haul. I'm optimistic that things would get better, but uh, yes, uh, my journey was a little more challenging because I opened in January. Um, I had a grand opening on 21st of February, I think. And then by March 15th, we decided we need to close down. Thinking of our employees, thinking of our own safety, uh, we couldn't keep it open. Now we are open, but again, we are not getting enough traffic. We, we barely get people. Most of the sales are coming from Uber, DoorDash, uh, and other like Grubhub and other delivery apps, but they do not even. I mean, I had another shop which had a fire issue in uh, 2018 August, which is still closed and being repaired. My sales are not even 10% of what I used to sell in Los Gatos, which is a very small population. Yes, we were there for about eight, nine months, but. Uh, Compared to the projections, I'm probably selling 5% of what I would have sold otherwise. Um, also, it hurts me more because if I had a brand there, people knew us about four or five years, they probably would have known that we are open. Right now that we are open, that also kind of difficult for people to know that we are open. And that's why we are actually meeting, talking to you and others so that people at least get to know that we exist and at least come and give us a chance to show what we can do. Uh, so that's that's my hope. Yeah, well, a lot of people I know are working very hard at the Union Square Business Improvement District, the Chamber of Commerce, San Francisco Travel, the mayor's office. Everyone knows this is the perfect storm for the San Francisco economy. So if it's any consolation, you have a lot of people who are pulling for you and other small businesses. I myself am on the yes. Chamber of Commerce board and the head of the small business committee. And stories like yours, I hear every day. So we're, we're here to help you and hopefully have more people buy ice cream. In, in our last few minutes, talk to me about what rolled ice cream is and how do you make it? Yeah, it, it has a background in Thailand. Uh, so this ice cream originated from Thailand. Um, so one of the main problems that ice cream I had with is that I was pretty picky about the flavors and most of the time it is not what actually goes into ice cream but uh, things that I wanted to exclude from ice cream was difficult. Uh, for example, if you want to have Rocky Road and you don't want to have say marshmallow in it, it's kind of difficult because many times marshmallow actually comes combined with the ice cream and you don't have any choice. I'm, I'm not saying I'm against marshmallow. I actually like it, uh, but uh, <laughs> I don't think there's much ice cream you don't like. Uh, maybe it's something like if someone makes with like alcohol or some some maybe with uh, 
maybe Coke or Pepsi, I might not have it, but uh, <laughs> I might try that <laughs> for once. But anyway, the, the point is my frustration with ice cream was that there was not much customization. So you can get cookies and cream, you can get chocolate, and you can get basic flavors. And you, you, are, you are kind of handicapped of what you can do with it. And you get it in a big bucket, you scoop it and give it to the customers. And they can add some toppings and that's all. But when I went to Thailand in 2016, uh, first time, that time, I think by the time US may have a couple of shops that had the roll ice cream, but I myself didn't see it. Uh, I didn't know that it existed at uh, the time. That's the first time I saw that. And I was lucky that I was get to go to the shop that actually started in uh, Thailand, this process of making this ice cream. It's done on a very cold plate. Uh, so when I'm saying cold, it's uh, minus 20, minus 15 degrees Celsius, minus 15 degrees Celsius. It's about um, maybe 15, 16 Fahrenheit. Uh, it's a very cold plate. And then you have a slightly high fat content milk as your base. So you are not actually putting anything chemical. You have milk and then you create your own flavor by adding, yes, you can add chemicals, but in our case, we don't. For example, if you want to make a strawberry ice cream, we simply take a strawberries, we chop it up on that cold plate. And the plate is so cold that within three to four minutes, you can create a layer of ice cream. First, you crunch it. So you will see a lot of crunching actions. You'll see a lot of cutting and chopping on the board. It's a kind of like a, a foot by foot kind of a plate, which is very cold, as I mentioned, minus 16 degrees Celsius or about 16 degrees Fahrenheit. And on that, you pour the milk, chop on the ingredient, maybe chocolate uh, for that you might have to use cocoa powder for strawberry you are using basic strawberry and then you actually make a layer um, maybe a square layer and then you just scrape it and once you scrape it it start to roll and from that it's called rolled ice cream Fascinating. and the, it's really good looking the process is really really enjoying uh, to the eyes and uh, really for the kids and when they come to our shop uh, they really enjoy it. Now it's kind of difficult because people are not coming inside the shop. I think it's going to change soon, but right now people don't come in the shop and don't get to enjoy the full experience. But the full experience is really enjoy enjoyable. And at the same time, they have a lot of uh, flexibility how they want to make their ice cream. If they want to make, make their own, they can actually tell us and we can actually do that on the go. So that's kind of beauty of this ice cream. And that's what uh, I was really attracted to. So by the time I came back uh, by 2017, and I opened my first shop, it took me about a year and a half. So my first shop in Los Gatos was opened in 2018. Um, so it took me a long time by the time there were quite a few shops uh, that were open. Uh, but but you but you were but you are responsible for bringing rolled ice cream to San Francisco. Uh, no, I would not say that. Uh, I, I have seen there are a couple of shops that opened before me because my first shop opened in Los Gatos, and I would say that yes, there are a couple of other shops that opened before me. But I would say that uh, if you think about uh, taste, quality, and using everything fresh, like fresh food and not using like sherbet instead of using uh, non-dairy product like uh, almond milk. Uh, those things, I think we are pioneers in that, uh, but I would not say that the first shop in the uh, local ice cream was opened by, well, but I, by I, 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 Yeah, but I, I am pretty sure you're the only person who has actually been taken to the hospital because you ate too many ice cream. I, I, I think I might be safe in that. Probably. <laughs> probably, probably. And the doctor was surprised. And when I didn't listen to him, he said that he took a big syringe because I was young and I was afraid of it. So he was, he took a big syringe and told, showed me the syringe and said that now if you don't disturb ice cream, I have to put that in your bronchial and have to suck the water that got accumulated yeah. there. Looks so I was, I was there for a long time. I, I think I was there for 10, 15 days in the hospital. <laughs> Let, let, all let's, my not, let's not go into the gory details. Let's just talk about the sweet stuff. <laughs> so we, we have to go, but why don't you tell people if they want to learn more about Glazier, where do they go online? What's your website? And where are you located in San Francisco Union Square? 
Yes, our website is www.glacierrolls.com. G L A Z I E R R O L L S dot com, and we are located on four one four Sutter Street, uh, opposite to the Apple uh, showroom there, and it's four one four Sutter. It's in the Union Square, and you can find us easily. And we also have our um, social media handle for Instagram and Facebook. That is same Glacier Roll. That is again G L Z I E R R O L L S. Great. And you I will can find put, us. I will put. I will. I will put all of that on here when I when I post the uh, the interview. Thank you, David. But the last thing I want people to know that on Sundays you come outside. Where can we find Glacier Rolls and Aaron Dom on Sundays? Uh, I may not be there on Sundays, but uh, my business partner, Nadia, may be there as well. Uh, and we would be there on the Ellis Street. Uh, so Ellis Street is now closed and they are doing a party. Uh, so both sides of the streets are closed and there is no vehicular movement and it's open to foot traffic. So you can find us on Ellis Street on Sundays and on other, uh, except Monday, we are open on all other day, days uh, on our store, 414 Sutter. And that's where you can find us. You can order also online uh, using DoorDash, Uber, uh, GrabHub, Postmate, uh, whichever you like. And we also do catering. So before you go, I would like to mention that I know it's a traveling time and we are not doing too many catering, but we started getting again orders of catering. So if you're having a small party, whether it's a corporate event or you are having a birthday or a marriage, we are a perfect complement for that. Uh, we can actually bring excitement level high. Kids love us. Uh, so birthday parties are like uh, our cup of tea. We do a lot of birthday parties actually. Um, we just did two last week. Um, so yes, if you are looking for exciting things in your birthday parties, I think Glacier Rolls could be a good option and could be a healthy option because it's basically milk and the foods and you can actually, we can customize product for you. Great. So well, it's, it's been a great out. Thank you. Great. It's been Thank a you. great pleasure speaking with you. I, I know kids of all ages love ice cream, me included. So I, I, <laughs> yes. I my birthday's coming up. So watch out. You, you may get a catering water. Arendam, it's been a Thank great you. pleasure speaking with you. We look forward to more and more people coming in, rolling into your store, as I like to say, so you can teach them the secret of rolled ice cream. Thank you for speaking with us. Thank you, Ray, David. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye. You too. This is David Perry. We've been speaking with Arendam Ja of Glazier Rolls, rolled ice cream. So roll on down to Union Square and check it out. I'm David Perry. Ahoy. Oh